somewhere suitable. Find somewhere before dark. Yes. Shelter either. Hmm? You know, given a bit of fiddling, I reckon I could get this lot working. Hey, you mean reshoot Jasper? I might manage it. Botched up retread job at least. Must be something to match his hoof size around here. Certainly save your shoe leather if you could. Yeah, exactly. Just one thing, Vulcan. Hmm? You're not showing anything this evening. On account of this here is reserved. For? cooking. Oh, that's better. Lucky find. Handy for the horses, too. Oh, there aren't more settlements around here. You don't think... Shh. Please. Kim. Nancy. Greetings in love, brother. Welcome. Sword of fire. Welcome. We're Charles and Pip. She's done. All right, if we kip in with you then, share of fire. Why not? Get the car, kid. Yeah, as long as it doesn't rain. There's also a forge to reshoe the horses. You've got horses? Yes. We're on our way back to our settlement a couple of days south of here. Where are you from? Around. We was in Birmingham at first. Then. What was it like? In the city. All right, at first light. Once you got used to the smell, great. But I just loaded gear stored away, didn't we? Plenty of stuff. Some kids got onto us. Kids? Did us over, see? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> that's the town. So then you, uh, you decided to try your luck in the country? Some luck? Well, why haven't you tried to join a settlement? That's not our bag, is it? It's better than just wandering around, surely. Yeah? Like that mob down the road? What more? About five miles. That way. How many? Never had time to find out, did we? We left in a bit of a hurry. Surely with a, with a limp like yours, you can't afford to be choosy. Not us. Them. They don't want to know. Just dirty hippies. That's what we are to them. 
Don't want to know. I see. Would you like a little meat? Rabbit. I think we might uh, manage them a little salt too, eh, Pet? Mm. Great. Salt, kid? Yeah, where'd you get it? Whole place up near Chester. Natural brine ponds. It's just lying there. Think I sit up in these caves. Yeah? That where you've been? Yes. We thought we had enough. But you get through it fast when you preserve with it. Here. What happened? You what? Has Nancy always been mute like this? Not like when we first met up. No, not then. I had this nipper, didn't she? Little baby boy. Rats got it, didn't they? Oh, no. The packs of them, see? In the town. Hunt in packs. I'm sorry. Leave her. Don't need your pity. We'll make out. See? Survive the death itself and then go under with the shock. Yes. Except there's no need. I wouldn't give this couple very long. Oh, I don't know. Give them the right help. Uh, uh. Well, we're not on this trip to pick up deranged vagrants. <laughs> Lord, what now? Poor devil. <laughs> They both fell down. That steward's hardly surprising. Honey! Easy, man. What's the matter? Lux! Throat! Burning! Quickly. Try and get them to drink as much water as possible. But Charlie... Quickly, I'll settle up the horses. What, and leave them? No, 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 no. Take him to the settlement he mentioned down the road. In the dark? Oh, come on, it'll soon be light. Uh, oh, come on, love. This must be the place. We're nearly there. you after? Well, we want some help, actually. Keep back. Um, look, it's all right, but we we met this couple, you see, and you can you can see for yourself what state they're in. Get going. Oh, now wait. You heard? They're ill. Had them crawling around here yesterday. Get? They could die. Better them than us. Now listen. Look, haven't you got some sort of quarantine quarters or something? Sure, but not for filthy scavengers like them. We've got something to trade. We can pay for the help. Pay? Yes, with salt. For mercy's sake. All right, but you two, you're in quarantine with them. 
anything. The isolation hut. Over there. <coughs> Got a doctor. That depends. Depends. Depends on what? The committee. Oh, the palace. Oh. Well, it makes our quarantine uh, quarters look a bit uh -huh. scant. Uh -huh. They got paraffin too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some water. We'll get him to drink as much as we can. Yeah. Come on, Come on, sit up. Now drink. Oh, swallow. swallow. Come on. Come on. See what they've got over there. Come on. Penicillin. Tetracycline. Oh. Oh. Drink. Various ointments. Drink it all. Come on. Well, over cautious or not, it's certainly well organized. One, two, three. One, two, three. Tails. Again. Again. Lunge. Well, Leonard, let's have it. Well, they say they're, they're from a settlement to the south of here. Seems they were camped down the road and these two termies pitched up. Around dawn, the termies got sick, so they brought them down here. It's presumptuous. Sir? Well, why, Lenny, you know the rules. Why'd you allow them in? Oh, well, they've got salt. Really? Yes, we wondered. Of course, as soon as I heard that. Yes. So what's up with these two termies? Of course, in a bad way. We'll go and check. Take care. Yes, of course. Lenny? In the settlement south of here? Yes, that's right. Where do you get all this salt? Uh, it's a trade secret. What's the matter with these two termes you brought in? The what? Termes. Terminals, zombies, vagrants, dropouts, whatever you call them. Oh, uh, well, I should say from the symptoms, the way it suddenly hit them, uh, food poisoning. Are you two all right? Yes. Any idea of what they were eating? Uh, stew of some kind. They had a cart with them yesterday. Where's that? And some outhouses way up the road. We'll check. Do you have a medical advisor of any kind? No. For Pete's sake, be quick! Gone. What do we do? There's not much we can do, is there, stuck in here? Damn these people. Why? We'd do the same thing. Would we? In these circumstances, yes. You can't take health risks. Not when it could mean infecting an entire settlement. Burn it. Electric. Come on, Sammy, hurry up. Oh, no. 
What's the matter? That's it. Some of our seed wheat. From the store? Well... Well, from where? Was it in the store? No. I left it in the shed. In the little one out by the planting field. <laughs> and now... Oh, dear God. It's all right, Sammy. For once, you've made the right mistake. He's dead? Yes. What about him? Seems to be just a sheep, better. No. We've been forcing him to drink as much water as possible. It seems to help. Not for long. What do you mean? There's still some of our seed wheat. It was dressed with Megano oxide powder. It's a fungicide containing mercury. Oh, my God. According to our medical books, if his heart's strong enough to withstand the initial shock, you'd die of kidney failure within a fortnight. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> now, if you'd like to come with me... Where? Well, we find you somewhere a bit more civilised. You both look as though you could use a hot bath. Well, I... Well, come along, then. Oh, wait a minute. What about him? Lenny will look after him. Yes? How? I imagine a strong painkiller would be the most effective treatment, Lenny. Right. Come along. All right? Mmm, Liz. Nice and warm, is it? Mm, I'll get these sewed up for her. You have a shoemaker? Among other things. How are yours? Oh, they're, they're fine, thank you. Well, uh, are you the boss of this outfit? Mr. Kershaw's our leader, Max Kershaw. Uh, well, I hope we can meet. Well, of course. You're obviously very well organized. We accept the need for total discipline. Yes, uh, it shows. Your late breakfast. Oh, looks like uh, real five-star stuff, eh? Hello. Thank you very much. My name's Charles Vaughan. Sammy Waters, sir. Thank you, Sammy. Well, that looks good. Homebrew? Yes. For you? No, thank you. Oh, that's very good. We are pleased with it. Mm. I'm sure. Like everything else around here. That's right. Except perhaps for, uh, salt? We're a long way from the coast. It is a problem. Well, perhaps it might prove some, uh, catalyst for some form of collaboration, eh? Mr. Kershaw may consider trading. I don't know. Oh. Well, why not? Our idea is total self-sufficiency. Uh -huh. Oh, that's fine for a start, but ultimately... What? Well, long-term survival against, uh... External threats and so on is going to depend on intersettlement cooperation. You believe? Well, yes. Oh, I don't just mean some sort of federal home guard or militia, though that's pretty crucial. No, there are lots of other aspects. Such as? Well, the need for communications, either by uh, connecting telephone wires or some form of short-rate radio. Lots of other mutual aspects. Like? Well, one settlement could specialise in uh, large-scale soap production, another one could go in for, for, for burning charcoal. The Industrial Revolution. So soon. Huh. Well, it doesn't have to be big to start with. I mean, you've got a shoemaker, we have a doctor. You make very good wine. We have a salt sauce. Where? <laughs> you take me to your leader. All in good time. When you're all cleaned up and presentable. We have been on the road almost a week, you know. I can believe it. He's almost as high as those termies. Carl, please. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> well, what, um... What system do you follow here? System? Your social organization. The new way of truth. <laughs> and what's that? Foundation of the family is a unified group. No crude subdivisions like individual marriages. We're dedicated to the disciplines of purity, selective procreation, physical development. And all this is new? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the reason I said that is because, uh, well, apart from the eugenics bit, it sounds a bit like the old kibbutz system. Mr. Kershaw had studied that, of course. 
You find we've greatly improved on it. Oh. Well, as I said, take me to your leader. So he's a bit of a joker, is he? Hardly. Well, what sort of a man is he? I don't think he has personal ambition. Well, they never do to begin with. And their horses are in good shape. One needed a shoe, but otherwise... So he care. understands husbandry. Well, I should hope so, but that hardly proves anything. Of course not. I just thought you ought to now, know. Apart from all this crut about collaboration, I mean, what did he say about the actual settlement? I suppose they have marriages and individual families. I'm afraid so. Peasants. You can't expect anything else. Change terrifies people. What did he say about their work schedules? I mean, what did he say about that side of it? From each according to his ability to each according to his needs. It's the old Marxist philosophy of imagined equality. You'd think they'd learn. Old habits die hard. But they must know about the death, that it was the communists who manufactured it, released it on the world, surely. Look, there are some people, most people, who could show them something as glaring as day against night, and they would still deny it. You see, change, anything new, is instantly rejected. Hopeless. Yes. I don't think they'll want to stay too long. Good riddance. Here, here. Yes. But we must find out where they get the salt. Agreed. Also, Vaughan's anxious to meet you. Then to seduce me into Federation, no doubt. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake, pet relax. I can't. Look. You've had a hot bath, you've had good grub, you've had wine, what more do you want? To get going. All right, but the horses could do the rest. Make arrangements to leave at first light tomorrow. You can't wait to have a go at their leader, can you? <laughs> well, I won't deny a certain curiosity. More than that, you want to recruit him, don't you? Well, you must admit, it'd be a bad settlement to join up with. All right, so they're a bit far away from us, but with a communication system. Huh. Oh, Pet, it could work. I wouldn't like to bet. Why not? I don't know. There's something creepy. Oh, nonsense. Listen. While you were sleeping just now, I was watching their field workers coming in for lunch. So? They were marching. A dozen people in a nice, neat column. Left, right, left, right, halt. So what? The woman Joy done, she made no bones about it. She said they all accepted the need for total discipline. Even so, marching your field workers? A bit extreme. We're in an extreme situation, all of us. Well, we don't march anywhere. Would it do any harm if we did? Where are you going? I want to see if there's a chance of getting old Jasper shod. Let's leave, Charlie, please, let's go. Look, even if we're to agree on that, you know very well we can't. What? Why? You know very well why. That woman took your boots. Can I help you? I was just going to check the horses. No need. They're fine. No, really, because the big white fellow was losing his shoe. That's right, sir. The groom fixed it. I just take a look. I told you, no need. Shouldn't you be tending the sick? Ah, well, there's no need for that either. What do you mean? You snuffed him. Now, damn it, if you. No, nothing like that. He simply crept out of the hut, and tried to make off with one of the horses. You're not serious. I'm serious for him. The dog's got. Once again, Lord, we thank thee for preserving us from the death plague, by which thee in thy infinite wisdom sought to purge the world of sin, ignorance, lust, sloth and corruption. Guide us, thy people, Lord. Show us who have been chosen, chosen to survive the holy death. Show us the ways of thy eternal wisdom. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now, unfortunately, due to our visitors, I must ask the members of the committee to forego their evening activities, but just for a while. The rest of you, please continue. Max. You see the man on his own. We're more likely to get the information from him. The woman's antagonistic. Damned people. Oh, come on. We don't know they mean us any harm. No. 
Well, what about that gangster Lenny? You said he made it perfectly clear. Only that, I don't know, just to stay clear of the horses, that's all. There you are. Maybe it's just him. Maybe it's just his manner. Maybe it's just officious. Damn fascist. Oh, nonsense, love. Is it? Look, a fascist. You should have met that lot we ran into in London. Well, I didn't. And this lot frightens me. Well, why? Well, they haven't disarmed us. We've still got the gun. Yeah, sure. But they've got my boots. For repair. All day? Well, how are you feeling? Had a good rest? I want to know when Oh, I we're can... fine. Thank you. It's just that uh, Pet's a wee bit anxious about her boots. Anxious? Well, it just... The shoe man's gluing on you, so So be ready in the morning. Oh. Now, if you'd like to come and keep, uh, meet the committee, we won't keep you very long. Well, what about Pet? You should be perfectly safe. The night patrol's on duty. Eventually, I hope you'll be able to address the whole community. Perhaps in the morning. But that will depend on Mr. Kershaw. Go on. Here's a bolt. Discipline of procreation. Which amounts to what? A program of eugenics? As I explained to you this morning. Yes. <laughs> the controlled breeding of a master race? The world has to be repopulated. As a matter of urgency. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I'm just a little suspicious of the way you're going about it. It would be criminal folly to resume mating on a random basis like before. Really? Of course. Now that we have the opportunity for planning and selection. Yes, but, but how do you plan? How do you select for the ideal offspring? The community decides. By general consensus. It's a lot better than your system. You think so? Marriage, individual family units. All part of the old way. Which indisputably failed. Oh, come Of no. course it did. Man's genetic history, Mr. Form, was a disaster. Persistent decline, both physically and intellectually. Civilization, so-called, simply perpetuated the survival of the weakest. Which is why the death became inevitable. The mankind had failed. And a new way had to be found. Ordained by God. I, are you saying that the death was an act of God? The eradication of 98% of the human race can hardly be shrugged off as a random act of destruction. There has to be a higher purpose behind it. A meaning. Well, one can, of course, read a divine intent can. into it. Must. Well, all right. The way has to be found, you see, Mr. Vaughan. It's the clear duty of those of us chosen to survive. Duty. Chosen. You disagree. Mm -hmm. so of course we must try and build again a new society, one which won't make the same mistake. Ah, but from what Subleader Dunn tells us, your methods are those of the old world. With modifications. But from each according to his abilities, to each according to his needs, hardly modified, the old impractical communism, in fact. Well, not exactly, but what's your answer? Discipline. Dedication. As the chosen. And what about these ideas of yours for intersettlement collaboration? What about them? Old ways again. Oh, come now. What's so new about Federation? Well, there's nothing new. I well, admit that is your ultimate aim, Federation. Yes, via trade and a pooling of resources. Aggression. You call it collaboration to us, it's pollution. With what? Old world ideas. Creatures like those two filthy termites you brought in here. You associated with them? Voluntarily. Well, we could hardly do anything else. They found our camp, they asked to share our fire and our shelter. We could hardly turn them away. No. Unlike you lot, apparently. We have a right to protect ourselves. Those two are finished. Degenerate, filthy, deranged scavengers. Not chosen. No. Fitted only for destruction. For their own self-destruction. Ah, yes, except that your thug Lenny took it on himself to accelerate the process. Your so-called painkiller solution. The man was dying anyway. Oh, is that another one of your new ways? Euthanasia. Is that why there are no old people here? Or cripples. Priorities, Mr. Bourne. You must accept that the survival of the fittest is a priority. Yes, along with your other fascist priorities, like eugenics and group isolation. They are necessary. Look, I hope to learn something from you people. Some disciplines to benefit my own settlement. 
Well, you have nothing. Sit down. We have stability. We have efficiency and purpose. You have a police state in embryo. Guns, drilling, uniforms, dogs. We have no frontiers, Mr. Vaughan. Anyone can leave if he so wishes. You're telling me they don't? Mostly those who have chosen to leave have been back within a week. Begging to be allowed back in. Begging. Well. Well, all I can say is that by comparison with us, you're, you're far too extreme. Too advanced, I think. Few can adapt to change easily, Mr. Vaughan. I'm talking about qualities you've lost. Qualities like love, human charity. You can't exclude compassion. You must tolerate some failure. No. That is precisely why it all failed before the death. Through weakness. Through a criminal liberalism which tolerated sloth and greed and ignorance. Then we have no mutual interests. Don't forget your salt sauce, Mr. Vaughan. I'm sorry. But as long as you insist upon this policy of isolation, it's quite out of the question. We might trade. No, oh, that's no good. Look. Why don't you let me put my ideas to the rest of your community? Why? Why not? So you're not oppressive, you're not a police state, all right. Let me at least try them. If so, it will have to be at assembly in the morning. Very well. Uh, tomorrow morning, at assembly. Chosen? By divine right? <laughs> well, that's how at least one of them, a very pregnant young lady on their committee, that's how she sees them. And Max Kershaw, their leader? Ah, well, he's less of an evangelist. He just reckons the old world was incurably bent. <sighs> what are you doing? Going to bed, what else? Bed? Surely you Oh, can't... relax, love. Look, they don't mean us any harm. Might be a virtual dictatorship, but at least it's a benevolent one. Take them to the woman now, Max. Tell them to go. Well, I thought you said you wanted that. That was only for the committee. We can't risk letting this man talk to them. His ideas are dangerous. On trade and federation? Yes. This community believes it's special. They are the chosen. That policy will only work in isolation, Max. Our whole system depends on it. But they believe in this system. They're not going to believe him. I'm not so sure. Their moods have been changing. We've had a good harvest. Plenty of meat on the hoof, wine in the vat, no more shortages or hunger. They're beginning to question us, Max. The discipline, the hard graft. They want things easier. I think you're mistaken. I'm closer to them. I've heard the whisper, seen the discontent. Well, I haven't you mentioned it before? I was controlling them. But now, this man with his obsession about unity, we can't risk letting them hear him. Forget the salt, Max. Just get rid of them. Did you hear that? Oh, Pat. They did murder that poor devil, Kim. They put him out of his misery. You're beginning to sound like them. You know that? Well, perhaps they're right about being chosen. Perhaps we were chosen. You and me and Greg and all the others. Oh, man. Who is it? Kershaw. Let me in. Yes. 
Thanks. Put them on. Take your things and go. Now, please, the patrol won't harm you. Why, Kershaw? Because I can't let you face the assembly. You decided I'm a bad risk killer. Will you just go? Afraid your people might prefer my ideas? I'm afraid for you, as it happens, for your safety. Oh? You see, they believe in me. They believe in everything that we are working towards. The new way. The new way, that's right, yes. If I let you speak at the assembly, if I let you speak about your damn federation, it's a heresy against everything they believe in. I can't answer them. I don't know how they might respond. A lynching? I'm just saying there is a danger. You've really got them so conditioned? So ruled by your propaganda? Hate the termies? Fear outsiders to the point of tearing them limb from limb. They might demand your execution. I don't know, and I can't risk it. No, you can't, but it's not our future you're concerned for. Kershaw is yours. No. I wasn't prepared for this, you know. Before the death, I was a schoolmaster teaching in Liverpool. What I'm trying to say is that I had strong feelings about discipline and self-sacrifice and all that sort of thing. But I wasn't prepared for leadership. But they have chosen me as a leader. And I've grown to understand them. So I'm telling you now, for your own sake, to go. Right. Let's go. Charlie! I simply don't believe him. Does it matter? Does it? Look, I've seen them in that big hut there. You haven't. I've seen the marching bit. That's enough for me. Yes, but that's it, you see. They're disciplined. They're not a mob. They're not a rebel. Neither were the Nazi minions at Nuremberg. Oh, come on. It's no different. Conditioned by extremes of propaganda, it's the them and us syndrome. Except that we're not that far gone. We were fanatics at first. All of us. You remember those months after the death? The anarchy, the terror. Dreadful deprivations of gang rapes. And then to find someone like Max Kershaw, strong, morally strong, the new messiah. Of course, we followed him. And now? Now it's the old power complex. He's afraid of losing his grip, which is what is driving him to these new extremes. Such as? Oh, what Mike told you earlier on about people running away. It was a put up job. Trusted men like Lenny, selected to run away and then come back with tales of persisting anarchy and terror outside. Oh, that's coming. Yes. Sustain the myth. The them and us syndrome, as you call it. Which is precisely why he can't risk letting you talk to them, letting you tell them the truth. Why he prefers you dead. What? You imagine he'd simply let you go? Why not? I've told you, extremes. He sees you, your ideas, as a, as a sickness, as a disease. If he were to let you go, you'd spread the word around the other settlements. And once you'd organized your federal militia, you'd be back in strength. Oh, but damn it, that's not what Federation's about. It is to Max Kershaw. It's a direct threat to his supremacy as leader. Well, that's insanity. So is Adolf Hitler insane. Walk through that door tonight and you're both dead. Murderers. Keep the door bolted. Your gun at the ready. I can save you. At assembly tomorrow, follow my lead. I can sway them, but I need your cooperation. Oh, no. Thank you. Uh, this man, Charles Vaughan, is from a community to the south of here. Now, he holds certain beliefs which, although alien to our ideas, may be of interest to you. Consequently, I call on Sub-Leader Dunn to examine him on those beliefs. Mr. Bourne. I advised you to go. I think you might regret that you didn't do so. Mr. Bourne? 
<laughs> now then, Mr. Vaughan, I believe you have certain criticisms of the way this community is organized. Yes? Yes, I feel that, compared with us, I feel you're too extreme. How exactly? I think you could be carrying discipline to dangerous limits. Only in the interests of survival, I assure you, Mr. Vaughan. However, let us examine this accusation. Well, it's hardly an accusation. You it's... say, as I understood you last night, you say we are becoming depersonalized. That in functioning as a group family, that is, free of individual marriages and so on, we may be losing certain human qualities, yes? Yes, qualities such as love and compassion. There is Developing that danger. Developing narrow prejudices. Possibly. You also condemn our program of eugenics. I question it. And you claim that our policy of euthanasia is cruel. When it's applied to old people and the infirm, to cripples and so on, yes. And you condemn our choice of non-cooperation with outside settlements. Most definitely, yes. So what's wrong with the ideal of self-sufficiency? Nothing for a start. As the population grows and stability is re-established, then inter-settlement cooperation must follow, and the sooner we can start, you the sooner... You see, Mr. Vaughan, your criticisms would carry more weight if they were borne out by your own actions. I'm sorry? You associated with those two termies. What's wrong with that? They needed help. You brought them here. You deliberately exposed this community to what might have been a contagious infection. But you've got quarantine facilities. But you didn't know that. Well, what if this is an example of what you mean by cooperation? Simple well, compassion, then... human charity. Not if we had been infected. What you did was criminal. A callous disregard for the safety of these people. Yeah. Yeah. Look, what is this, a trial? No, Mr. Vaughan. Merely an inquiry into your criticism of this community. Well, then. You must see that by associating with those termies, you exposed yourself to their physical infection and to the degeneracy of their minds. Those two proof that no matter how innocent your intentions, you must ultimately fail, be dragged down to their level. Look, you may not call this a trial, but that's what it's turning into. If I'm not to be allowed to justify well, maybe my Maybe it arguments. is a trial. Why? Because I, as leader, want it so. Because I suspect that your presence here isn't what it seems. What do you mean? Oh, it's not the chance intrusion, Mr. Vaughan. It's not the Samaritan mission it appeared to be. Oh, no. That aspect of it was only an opportunity which you seized upon to your own advantage. To my own? What other motive could I possibly have had? The deliberate subversion of this community. Yes. 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 Oh, that's insane. It's ridiculous. It's not how our leader regards it. Max Kershaw is a man of vision. He knows the truth. Really? Well, if you ask me, all he knows is fear. Fear for his position as leader. You say that. He doesn't. He says this community is unique. That we have a mission to find the new way. That we are chosen. Chosen by the divine authority of God. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that right, Max? And you, you were chosen by God to be our leader. Uh, Joy, no claim. No. Don't you have divine authority? Aren't you free to disregard compassion? To condemn human charity as weakness because he who speaks for God must be right? Well, Joy, this is absurd. Yes. Yes, it is because it's a lie. And everything you stand for is a lie. What are you talking about? Discipline, he told you. Purity. Hate the degenerates outside because only we know the way. He is degenerate. He has lied to you. He has resorted to criminal deceit. Oh, she's mad. Don't you listen to her. Do you deny plotting to kill these two people last night? Do you? Well, of course I deny it. Did he come to you? Did he urge you to make a run for it? Did he? Yes, he did. You heard him. Oh. And I was to be there. Executioner. Oh, this is a fabrication, every single word of it. Lenny, you were on duty. Did you see him? No. At least let him out, sir. Did you see our leader go to their hut last night? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, he went there. Oh. Well, it was her idea. Mine, you're the leader. You give the orders. But she urged me to warn these two off. Max, please, no more lies. He's afraid. Afraid of letting you listen to this man? Terrified of your learning the truth about the outside. No, no, listen to me. For some reason, she is trying to deceive you. all along. Jack, Fiona, Lenny, we 
when you ran away and came back, was that all a put-up job? Was it? Lenny! Yes, yes, it was. I and you two. There we are. But you were party to that. Only because you ordered it. Hi, we are. And now, now he resorts even to murder. Oh. These two people whose only crime was to question his power over you. Oh. Now listen to me. All of you. Listen. Now she talks of power. She is the one who is after power. Can't you see? For us. All right. That depends. On. What you've got planned for Max Kershaw? The firing squad? We're not barbarians. The usual penalty is banishment. He's far more used to me here. Hmm? He's been discredited. I shall appeal for clemency. The new regime is much more humane. He remains here as proof of that. Hey! Where's the salt? Forget it. What? Forget it. You gave it to them? I wanted to get away. Minister. <laughs> well, she's certainly a politician. And they are always the survivors. <laughs> 